Welcome to IBC 2025. This year we bring together our global media, technology and entertainment clients showcasing their groundbreaking innovations right here in Amsterdam. Well, it's day three here at the IBC and I'm with Phil from Mavis. Phil, how's it going so far? Yeah, great, thanks. We've uh, had a really good show so far. We've got uh, three new interesting things coming out in the Mavis world. We have, Oh, detail, yes, detail. Well, exactly, we have uh, an integration with the Atomos Ninja Phone. This is an adapter that allows us to bring HDMI sources into the uh, Mavis camera app. We also have an integration with NDI, which means we can bring NDI in as a source and also deliver NDI. So we can be a camera in an NDI network or be a monitor into an NDI network. And we also then bring a completely monitor-based app, which allows you to monitor NDI on either iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV. Wow, where to begin? Now let's unpick that. Is it available now? Yes, it's all available now. The camera app is a free download. Uh, in fact, both of the apps are a free download. The NDI bit is uh, paid for because of the licensing, yeah. and uh, you can go and get it off the app store right now. Yeah. Wow, okay. How are customers reacting? They love it. I love it, obviously. But yes, very excited because now it really takes mobile into the sort of center of production, really. We're in a world now where everyone's got really powerful compute in their pocket, but we're not really yet using it for broadcast. So what we do at Mavis is we're taking that compute that you've got, all that connectivity that you've got, and putting the broadcast layer on top with our software systems. My goodness, blink and things are changing. It's a really exciting time for the industry in general. Talk to us about some of the trends, if you like. Well, this is one of the major trends is to try and use sort of more off the shelf technologies because they are state of the art. They are they are moving at a pace that nothing really can compete with. Yeah. But to add a layer of broadcast on top of that is really exciting because of course broadcasters, they need to develop the same quality of content, but they need to do more of it with possibly less budget or mostly with less budget, let's face it. Yeah. And then content creators who have been sort of sitting in this world of uh, waving cameras around now really want to produce broadcast flavored stuff, but they just don't have the budget or possibly even the skill yet so we're trying to be in the middle where we can really help bridge that gap so, so marrying that all up if you like yes exactly yeah that's right so the content creators they're coming upwards the broadcasters are coming downwards and we're in the middle ready to meet them both so talk to me about those solutions who are your kind of end users your customers if you like well, so in the broadcast space, we're looking at people like Grass Valley, and there's a really good, interesting demo on Grass Valley where they can take uh, mobile content directly into uh, their AMP solution or into Framelite X. So you can take file-based stuff directly in, so you can be sitting there shooting on a shooting on a phone, and that can go into the system directly as a file, and then you can play it out very rapidly into your program, whatever you're doing. And then, of course, uh, with a live sort of thing, you can ingest directly into live and then cut it to air straight away. That's at the broadcast side. Side of things yeah. from the consumer side of things we, we can uh, we've got an integration with uh, Adobe Frame.io so it's very easy to run around shooting loads of stuff this is being uploaded to your editor wherever your editor may be or in fact yourself later on yeah. and this stuff is just going up to the cloud and now you can just sit and edit that as as it happens you're shooting push stop it ends up on a timeline somewhere and you're you're you're, you're editing that process has sort of it's it's we no longer run around with memory cards. We're not in that business anymore. We're in a connected world. We've got these connected devices. So we're we're enabling people to just work faster, work smarter, and be. I'm going to say better. it's about being more efficient. Yeah. It's about being faster. It's simplifying the whole thing. Exactly. And you know, if you if you are actually working in a team and you've got an editor, that editor can get back to you really quickly. Can I have a wide, please? You forgot to shoot the wide, or, or whatever, and you can now yes. go and get that. Yes. Whereas before, it's oh, I've got home, and now I've realised I haven't shot it. So it's that kind of thing, and we don't have to have people spending all night editing because all the stuff's been shuffling over, you know, days of people sneaker netting it back to the to the hotel room. This is can happen all in real time as it's happening, and that's I think a really exciting thing that mobile offers that is really difficult to get from um, anything other than the, the, the kind of solution that you, you've got on you right now. You can react, you can get the information there and ultimately in the broadcast world for the viewer a better experience. Yeah, totally. So from a broadcast point of view, it's all about getting it there quickly, high quality and really being reactive to what's going on in, in the world that, you, that, that, that you're working in. And then from the, from the content, uh, c content creator's point of view, yeah. you know, you're, you're not constrained now by the hardware. You are in a world now whereby you're shooting, your editor's editing or, or however your team's operating. Yeah. 
and you don't have to now worry about any technical stuff. It's just happening in the background for you. And that I think is really powerful. And we do the same thing with broadcast actually, because we can enable journalists and other people that aren't broadcast engineers to now start bringing in content directly. It's a very simple process to connect this stuff together. You don't have to worry about IP addresses and subnet masks, if anyone can remember what they are. So they, they, yeah. we're in a world where we can connect this really easily, really simply, and just get the information and the video and the pictures and the audio flowing in the direction you want it to flow as quickly and as easily as possible. But I think it's worth pointing out, without sacrificing quality, Exactly, and, and specifically um, editorial quality. We want actually to improve the editorial quality because you've got more time to react, it's quicker, it's faster, etc. We're not, we're not uh, suffering from picture quality, obviously, because this stuff is just brilliant. I mean, the picture quality issue really isn't an issue much anymore, I don't think. We're in a world of saying, uh, we can do this stuff fast, you can have the editor editorial control you need, you can get it into your programs quickly and responsively, and you are reacting to what's going on in real time, and I think that's very important. The future is exciting. It is. Blink and you miss it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us today.